In this video, I'll show you how you can create a multi-state object slideshow in a responsive design project. Okay, let's get started here. So I've done a little bit of the preliminary work here. I've created a responsive project that has, I'm um, using, going to use, try to use all five breakpoints here. Um, I'm going to just make a couple of changes here to this here. I just want these um, to take up uh, a little bit more space here. We'll make them 10% uh, wide. And the height will be, let's say, 10%. Now let's go a little bit more here, 15%. That looks okay. No. Yeah. 18%. Let's try that. That's good. I like that. I'm fussy that way. You can't really see it here, but I actually have a nice thick outline, which will be appropriate for uh, messing around with uh, different backgrounds here. Now, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to load all of the objects that I need for this carousel uh, or slideshow, if you will, multi-state object slideshow into the library so I have those ahead of time. It's probably a good best practice when you're uh, when you're working and trying to keep track of a bunch of things here. So if you click on your library tab and you'll see a bunch of icons below the preview window, uh, one of those is the import um, icon. We're going to click that here and I have a couple of background images, three of them to be precise, and just using my control key and clicking the mouse on the ones that I need and then click open and they'll now be a part of my library. So that's good to, to, to have there. Um, one of the things I also need for this particular slideshow is I'm going to be using a, a character to go along with the different slides. So I'm going to use the media drop down icon and select characters. Uh, of course, you have a series of characters built in, but you can use the asset store. Uh, to load in different characters if you don't want to use one of the ones that are uh, default characters. So we're going to use uh, this character here. I'm going to bring him in there. Just move him off to one side a little bit here. And we're going to bring in a couple of other choices as well. All I'm doing at this point, really, I don't need all of the characters on this one slide. But um, by having them brought in this way, I can ensure that they're also going to be in my library as well. So let's find a third character to go with this set of characters here. Characters, and we'll find that one's good. So we have all three characters there. And um, I'm going to delete all but one of them. I'm going to delete these two guys here because we're going to start off with this gentleman right here. And uh, what we want to add, of course, is uh, some additional objects to go with this character. And the, I find one of the most interesting ways that you can do this is that you can actually uh, create a multi-state object that makes up, that's made up of more than one object. So if I was to actually go to the properties panel here, and we'll just go into state view and we can add new states from the left hand side here. So new state and we'll say beach. And we can say desert. And that should do us right there. So we have uh, three different versions of this fellow right here, but they're actually the same image. So I want to change those. So I'm going to edit this one here, and I'm actually going to not edit rather, but rather uh, choose the new character from this choice here. So there we go. There's choice number two or state number two. And let's choose another state here that's even more different than the others. I thought I had one more to choose from here. Uh, 
There we go. So we have three different versions of this character. That's perfect. That's what I had in mind. Now I can add certain things to each of these different states as well. So I can actually go over to my my library here and um, well we'll start off with desert because I know I have a, an image of the desert here. And let's just find that. There's the desert. So let's bring that in and we'll just put that on the stage and we're going to do a couple things here. Now I know that this uh, particular uh, breakpoint is 1024 wide. So let's just go to the position here. Uh, the height is set for auto, but let's change this to pixels and change this to 1024. And that should give us the exact size that we need for this particular window. If I go to the properties panel now, I can actually hit, uh, hit fit to stage. Oh, it's actually a little bit uh, not quite the right size here. Um, oh, that's right, because I did hit fit to stage. Let's per first of all move him to the background. So we have this image there, and um, we're set up, of course, to be in pixels. But let's go percentage for a moment, just for a moment here. And I'm going to change this one to auto, the height to be auto, and I'm going to choose the width to be 100%. because I want to make sure he covers the entire stage at this point. That's perfect there. Now I'm going to switch this back to pixels, and you'll see why in a moment there. Because uh, I want the aspect ratio to, or I want the size of the background image to be the same regardless of which breakpoint you're on. And this will be... Um, you know, it'll be a good effect for the multiple breakpoints that we're going to use. I do want to tie it to a certain point on the screen. Um, so I want it to be tied to the bottom left as opposed to the top right or centered or anything like that. So I'm going to choose bottom and I'm going to choose zero. So this image will always be aligned to the bottom. And we'll choose uh, left at 0% as well. So the effect that that will have is at the different breakpoints, you'll see that the image is always going to be right here. You'll always be standing on the left-hand side of the road. Now, the problem with our character, of course, depending on which breakpoint you're looking at, he's going to be floating up in space or or things like that so we want to make some similar object position choices for him as well uh, I, I always like to first of all switch to pixels and then decide okay well i want him to fill a certain height on the screen uh, so we're going to change the width to be auto and then set his height to be 75% of the stage. Now, we also want to choose how far away he is from the left and how far away he is either from the top or the bottom. Alternatively, you could choose how far from the right he is as well. But because we're keeping him on the left, uh, that'll be appropriate there. So I'm going to change the anchor point for him, if you will, to the bottom and we'll choose a percentage uh, relatively low because I want him low on the screen and to the left. So we'll say 10% uh, from the from the bottom and maybe we'll say 10% from the right. Let's take a look at what that looks like at the different breakpoints. That looks pretty good. Yeah, I think that's going to work out nicely. And now the, the other thing we need to add, of course, is um, where our text is going to go. And we're just going to use a pretty standard square box for this, nothing fancy. I'm going to um, make it white. And we'll keep it at about 80% uh, uh, opacity, because I do want to see the, the, the content in the background. I am going to get rid of the stroke, though. I don't need a stroke on this particular image. And we'll just put some text in here. We'll say the desert not desert, desert. This summer I visited 
the desert. It was very hot and dry. So we can just make this look like it's a journal entry by having it, uh, you know, aligned on the page a certain way. We'll put some margins there. I think I'll bump up the font as well, uh, just to be appropriate for the size box it is. 30%, that looks good. And again, with responsive design, you always need to think about where it is on the page. So 13% uh, from the top, well, that might be a good choice. Uh, I'm actually going to make a different choice here. I'm going to go to the position panel and, um, oops, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to align the center vertically. So it's always the same distance from the top and the bottom. But I am going to uh, choose the right-hand side in this case and then make it about 10%, maybe 5%. Well, it's a pretty big box. So let's see how that works for um, for the different breakpoints there. That, not too bad. Yeah, so there's a problem there. So let's uh, let's go back here and change the uh, rather than the width being a certain height. Let's go back to pixels, pixels, and now change uh, the height to be a certain percentage and the width to be auto. And let's say 90% there. And actually, we're going to just shrink that down. Let's see what this looks like at the different breakpoints there. Eh, it's not bad. It's not bad. You could, um, I, I try not to um, deviate at the different breakpoints. I'd prefer to have one size fits all. Let's maybe shrink this down a little bit more. I think we can get away with that. That looks good. Okay, so here is one of our object states. Remember, the object is actually our character, and we've added a couple of items to this multi-state object, the background and the description that goes with that background. So we can do the same thing on this slide as well, and we'll just quickly uh, duplicate the, that process, but with a couple of different images. And uh, we'll fast forward through this so that you can see uh, the end result. Okay, so I've created all three different multi-state objects or all three different states. So again, remember the entire time that I was doing this, I was in uh, state view or um, multi-state view, if you will. So essentially, I've just created uh, multi-object multi-state views. So we have um, a different view for each different breakpoint and uh, you can see that and we've made I've made different choices for each one like in this case here I really like this mountain peak and I wanted to keep that on the stage at all times so I anchored this image to the bottom right hand corner so this side of the image would always be visible. Uh, in the case of the beach, I wanted the beach in the shot at each time. The buildings are nice, but uh, the ocean is what's important here. Uh, I also shrank down the font size when we got down to uh, mobile portrait. And of course, uh, in this case here, uh, the desert, you know, I, I chose the bottom left and, and again, sh uh, shrunk down the, the font size. So this should work nicely across all the different views. So now that we have our multi-state object, I know this seems crazy, but every single part of this is part of one single multi-state object. So if I hit exit state right now, I go back to this view here, and we want to bring this to the background, because what's important for this slide is these two different controls here. So to toggle, between all the different multi-state views of this single object now, which is made up of many objects, we want to put a little action behind the, these buttons here. So rather than on success continue, we're going to change this to go to next state, or in this case, because we're using the back button, go to previous state, it's going to automatically in, in, uh, select image six because image six is the only multi-state object. 
And I know it's it's a little hard to wrap your brain around, but image six is this guy, this background, and this text box, or smart shape, if you will. So all of that is part of image six now. We're going to leave continue playing the project unchecked. Uh, if it's checked off, you want to uncheck it uh, because we don't want to continue playing the project to the next slide and the slide after that and so on. Um, and of course, we're going to do the same thing for this button here. We're going to change that to go to next state. And again, because there's only one multi-state object on this page, it's going to choose it automatically. So I think we're pretty much set up to go. Again, one slide. We got a whole bunch of information. And of course, we did three examples. Um, in this case, the mountains, the beach, and the desert. Um, but of course, you could have as many as you wish. Um, or as many as Adobe Captivate will allow, basically. So let's preview this and see what this looks like. So here we are. We've got our character off on the left giving us our a slide tour of, of his various vacations. So here he was at the mountains. Uh, this winter I went to the mountains. We downhill skied almost every day, but I also went cross-country skiing as well. We had a great time. Let's take a look at the different um, breakpoints here. How does this look? Uh, I just see something we'd have to fix. Obviously, I'd want my button not to interfere with that box, but that's a, an easy fix. And obviously, you're going to want to make sure the font size is shrunk down to the appropriate size. But as you can see, this looks pretty good right up to the, the portrait mobile view. So that's pretty good. Let's go back to desktop view. Try the next one, the beach. This summer, I went to the beach. We had a great time. I went swimming almost every day and even tried surfing for the first time. And again, this works well with the responsive design. Uh, again, you just have to watch your text, which I would need to do uh, for this breakpoint here. And obviously, make sure it doesn't interfere with your navigation elements. Let's go to the next one here. The desert. This summer, I visited the desert. It was very hot and dry. So again, the, the responsive design seems to work pretty well. A couple of tweaks I would do, but otherwise, a pretty neat looking little course. And of course, I can go back, forward, back, forward as often as I wish. And then presumably you would have a next slide to go on to the next part or the next chapter of your slideshow. Guys, if you like the videos that I'm producing for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was kind of cool and in, uh, educational, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.